Universities Research Lab. I have great colleagues that uh, push me all the time. I'm sure that they will be sure to have me at some point today. <laughs> um, so what we looked at is a colleague of mine, Greg McVeary, and I, we created last year an instrument. It's called the Dispositions of Online Reading Comprehension, the DORC. And what we looked at is what are the skills, what are the aptitudes and attitudes that students have to have in order to read online, work online, and do so skillfully. The DORC consisted of a number of uh, Likert-based items that the students all responded to, which tomorrow morning we will present. But there was also a component, there were five open response questions that were embedded in the instrument. And what I did was I took the time to code those and figure out where exactly do these kids picture themselves in terms of working online. Um, and I tried to pull out some quotes and some statements because I want to give the students the opportunity to voice their feelings. So I, I, in, I, I embedded some of them in the PowerPoint. I didn't want to put too many because it would get too cheesy. Uh, but I'm going to try and share some of those. Uh, one of the best quotes was, there's no pages. You feel more free, not like a prison. You can also have more access. Um, so we'll move on. So the DORC is a self-report instrument. We're looking at learning dispositions necessary for online reading. Um, one of the best parts about this is that the DORC, we ran it at the end of the TICA work that we just completed. Uh, so it was given to all the students along with all the ORCA and all the other uh, instruments that we use to gauge their progress throughout the year. We only gave one implementation of the DORC we did at the end of the TICA work. So there were other instruments, but I think the thing that's most important to note is that this instrument was given to students in Connecticut and South Carolina after 20 weeks of intervention on online reading comprehension, okay? So at least for the state of Connecticut, we rolled in the Apple Mobile Lab, and we had, it, I can speak for my, my site, we had two days a week of very direct instruction in using the computers, in working online. The, DOR, the DORC, a variant of it now, is running in the state of Maine. Uh, so the state of Maine is implementing it with all 7th and 8th grade students. Uh, so far, as of last count, we have about 1,500 students that have taken it. So hopefully next year at NRC we'll have more of a picture of what these students are working on. In future variations of this, we'd like to take it and extend it to all, or all forms of working online, not just the online reading component, but online content creation and everything else that the students can do. It's pretty hard just unpacking the reading. Um, so the content, the, the results, I took all the results out, put it into one unit, uh, read through and tried to find common themes. Uh, I went and divided them all into units. And what we did was there's five open response questions. All five were grouped into an explanation unit and then subcategories within, the within the explanation. But then there was also question five we had an evaluative and an explanation unit that we assigned cat, uh, the coach to. Uh, as I said, the, the evaluative is only for question five, and what we're looking at is a general, I like it, I don't like it, I really could care less. Um, you know, the, once we get to question five, how do you feel about using the internet in school? Very tame, very basic question. The responses were great. Uh, and some of the students, you know, could care less. I don't, as long as it, it's a, as long as it's an effective way of learning, then it's good for me. Whereas other people, other students that we worked with, had very clear, very definite reasons why they like to use it or not. And the explanation units were used for all five to figure out where the students felt that they, you know, stood on the scale. So the the question that directed me is what attitudes and what aptitudes are at play with these adolescents when they are working online in school, okay? So I think the, the most important piece that I got from this is it's a snapshot of students in the process of multimedi multimediating, it's in the process of working online in school, and it's them checking themselves to figure out where exactly do I stand on this continuum? So they're, they're taking a, it, it provided an opportunity for them to be honest with me and with themselves about where they stood and where they view themselves in terms of being a skilled online reader. In general, also just working online. Question number one, 
In a few sentences, describe the person, the type of person you think is really good at reading websites. Uh, the breakdown for this, we had about 20% of the students, about 20% of the responses named a person, okay? Adam, uh, the teacher, um, a parent, an aunt, an uncle. So they had in their minds somebody that was really good at it, and they named them specifically. And I think that's very key for the results as we unpack it, is that they, they have, some of the students do look to someone as being good at working online, and they sort of, they see the skills and, and, the, and the abilities in them, but even more so if you're talking about a student, as we'll see later, they like having the social learning, they like having the ability to go ask a teacher, go ask another student, more so go ask another student for help if they get stuck. So some students, not a lot, some students have that model that they look to. Um, after the 20 weeks of the intervention, we had 34% of the responses that named specific skills that we taught them. Um, considering that we, those of us that were in the classrooms, considering that we were there that long, to me that number is kind of low. But we did have students that brought up key terms, key aspects that we taught them through the intervention. So we have to ask ourselves, why didn't more of our students bring the keys and the terms and the skills from the intervention into the way they viewed themselves as an online reader? Um, but also, another large contingent didn't have any response at all, okay? No response, or specifically says, I don't know anyone like that, okay? So it's, it's a, a, after, this was shocking to me because after the 20 weeks that we worked with the students, we had a large number that either still had one individual that they were looking to as a model, they had other students that looked at the key skills that they, that they learned and they worked on with us, then we still had a large contingent that had no clue. Uh, so moving on, question two. What is the best way to learn something new on the internet? Uh, for those of you that have seen, the work that we've done for the Tika grant and Friday when we break down some more of the results, we have them working online, inquiry based, we send them out there with a problem, they have to go find the, the, the result, we have them working on critical evaluation, we have them being flexible, we have them revising questioning strategies, so this, this is something we've been working on for a long time. 37% of our kids brought up some of the advanced skills. We had a large, in the packet that I handed out, we had a large chunk that said, read. I, I think it was 22% of the students said, read. That's the, the best way. Um, but then the higher order skills, uh, we had one on there that was go to one, one search engine. So if a student named one search engine and they went to that all the time, and, they made, and it's you know the click and look strategy, they would go right in. To me, that was not one of the higher order thinking skills, the higher order skills that we worked on. So we looked at which students brought up some of the more difficult things that we introduced in Tika. Um, very important, I think also, is the 12% that's looking for the collaborative learning, they're looking for the assistance from teacher and student. They specifically said, you know, if I get stuck, I can ask the teacher for help, or if I get stuck, I can ask another student for help. Uh, so I think as we move on, it, what we can draw from this is building that social learning in and having an opportunity, for example, the IRT model, shifting responsibility and power away from the teachers to the students and letting the students help the other students in their work. Three, what is the best part of using the internet in school? So now we're shifting and we're starting to look at generally how they view themselves as learners and themselves as creators and readers online and what skills they saw there. Um, very strange that as we unpack this in the lab, about 40% of the kids <coughs> noticed that it was, if they had the opportunity to use laptops and use computers in the classroom, they wanted academic experience. They wanted to be able to go online they wanted to be able to search for more, for more information. They wanted to go online and search for info that related to what they were doing in class. They wanted to, if you're in social studies and you're studying a, a certain culture or a certain economic system, to have the opportunity to go online and search for more info to fill in the missing pieces, fill in that prior knowledge part. 
They wanted an opportunity to not only search for academic interests, but also look for their own interests, obviously. Uh, they wanted time to learn how to use the internet, okay? Uh, they want to learn how to search, to learn how to go on and create, to go on their MySpace page and create, and they wanted time to figure that out by working with others, working with the teacher. Um, and, and a large portion of this was just getting our work done. They liked the opportunity to go online, use Microsoft Word because it's faster, use the internet to research because it's faster. Um, we can work more efficiently, we can get more information, we can get more up-to-date information. We want the opportunity to get that done because we can get our assignments done and raise our grades. 16% I blocked together and that was the group of kids that said free time. As I started coding I saw a lot of free time results. They dwindled as it went on. But gaming, free time, and music accounted for just only about 16%. To me, it was somewhat, you know, uh, shocking, I'll use the term, that so many students went for the academic and they cited academic reasoning for using the laptops in the classroom and using the technology, and a, a low amount wanted it for the gaming, the free time, and the music. I thought that there would be a lot more. Uh, we weren't sitting over their shoulder as they were responding. We gave them the opportunity to be honest, and I was somewhat amazed that they that so many students wanted the opportunity to use the laptop in the classroom for academic reasons. Um, question number four: What's the hardest thing about using the internet in school? Uh, a wide spectrum of results for this. Uh, one piece, one component that really stood out was difficulty in finding finding information online in general, finding information online that was valuable and appropriate to the task, finding the answer to the question that they were looking for, and finding, because we spent a lot of time looking at bogus or hoax websites, we found, we spent time looking at, you know, critically evaluating what you're looking at online, they trusted all of the materials that they were looking at online until we brought up the hoax websites, and then after that, that, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the skeptical part of them started started building. So they started wondering about what they were viewing. So a large portion, 31%, looked at, it's really hard for us to go online, find information, make sure it's appropriate, gets our answer done, helps us get our work done. Um, for those of you that uh, work in your, in your classrooms and work in your university and can't get onto sites because they're blocked, your kids are having the same problems. Uh, a large trend across all five questions was the issue that the students had with blocked access, blocked sites. Um, and, and as I was discussing yesterday, you know, some of the kids were very pointed in their comments. I had a student that said, you know, I mean, if I, if I go online and, and I'm looking at pornography in school, I understand that that's wrong and I should get in trouble. But if I'm going online and I'm looking at Nickelodeon.com or FunBrain.com, I'm looking at a site where I can go on and play educational games or even go on YouTube, I'm not allowed to do so and I don't understand why. Okay, uh, other, other pieces that go along with the blocked access, a lot of students had issue with the, the, the problem of I go home and I look at sites and, I, and I'm on sites at home all the time, but then when I go in school and I try to look at the same site or, or you know, look at materials on the same site, I get in trouble. I instantly get in trouble. I don't understand why that occurs. If it's okay for me to go on at home, it, then why can't I go on at school? Now, I understand that there's, you know, reasons for that. Most of them, my students have broken in the past. Um, but I think that we need to take a look at the way that we block, the way that we filter, but also the way that we educate our students about dealing with the Internet and their safety. Um, another interesting piece from this question that popped up was only about 5% of the kids were worried about the vocab online. They, were, they, they said that the, the vocab online was challenging and sometimes it was difficult to read. Throughout the work in the Tika grant, uh, most of us questioned each other when we wondered whether or not the vocab, the, the specific reading level in some of the pages that we wanted our kids to read and break down, if the vocab was too hard. So, you know, we had the idea to just take a page, copy it out of a, a work, out of like our work of, know, assessment and paste it right into Microsoft Word and have it do the grade level, you know, 
figure out what grade level it's at, just to see, okay, we have kids in a seventh grade classroom, a lot of which are, you know, below grade level by two or three levels. Can they read this if it weren't online and, and not just specifically in line? A lot of kids really had a problem with that. Uh, not, really, not really sure as to why that is true, but I thought that the vocab would be a much bigger problem. Question number five. How do you feel about using the internet in school? Uh, one, of the, one of the best questions on there, a very simple, straightforward, uh, basic question. And we got a, a great mix of responses. Uh, one of the first of which that popped up was, this is the one that we did the explanation unit and the evaluative unit. So a lot of students would come out right away and say, I like it, I don't like it, I really could care less. It's good, it's bad. So they gave the evaluation of how they felt of working online then they also gave the explanation for that. Some students gave me one evaluation unit and numerous explanation units. You, you had the whole spectrum. Uh, about 60% of the kids liked it. 60% of the kids liked it, they were positive, it was fun, it's something that they wanted to do. There was a general positive element to, what, to, to working online using the internet in school. About 32% said they didn't like it or they were indifferent. They could really care less. Um, Considering that this, obviously, I'm looking at it with my Tika glasses on, this is, you know, in the state of Connecticut, we rolled in with our, you know, fancy Apple mobile lab, and we had <laughs> all the bells and whistles, and all we figured all the kids were online and all excited, and there was a buzz in the building as we walk in with the materials. Surprisingly, a lot of kids really could care less or didn't like working online and working using the internet in school. So as we unpack that, what I did was I teased out in the packet I give you the evaluative reasons and I give you the explanation reasons for all of them. As we teased it out, we looked at, okay, why, the kids that said that they didn't like it, they were indifferent, why? That, that's the real story that I want to pull out. So one of the issues was the access, okay? A huge problem that we had was the access, being blocked, challenges that we had, uh, constricted block sites, you're not giving me the opportunity to search for things that interest me. When I'm online, I'm always searching for materials about school. I don't have the opportunity to search for things that interest me and I want to learn about. Um, not enough time to work online. Uh, also, authentic learning experiences. I go into one class, uh, you know, a student would say, well, last year we went into social studies a lot and we worked a lot in social studies online and now this year we haven't done anything at all. So they, they, as a student thinks back, they sort of have like mileposts uh, of their continuum on the educational railroad and they're saying, well, you know what, last year I spent a lot of time working in social studies, but now I'm not doing it this year. I hope when I get to high school I have opportunities to work online. Um, this, I heard the same thing when I was teaching in high school that students that worked with me and they did you know things online and blogging and stuff and podcasting said, so, well, we, we did stuff with you, but not stuff last year, and I'm gonna be a senior next year, hopefully in college. So I think that's a, a trend that we see with our students. They're recognizing which of our educators are using technology and which aren't sort of looking forward to opportunities to. Um, plus the authentic learning experience. Uh, a number of comments were, were given of students that basically said, you know what? Uh, we go in, we learn something online. The context of what we're doing makes sense when we're, work, work, when we're working online, but then when we put the computers away, like that whole idea and that lesson goes away too. There's no relation to what we're doing in class. There's no relation to what we're doing in our other classes. It's sort of that lesson exists just for when we're using the computer. So it's somewhat pointless. Uh, challenges also, can't trust the info. Uh, we talked about instant messaging. Some of them had an issue with, okay, I'm online and I'm trying to research and every once in a while my iChat is bubbling up and it's, and it's beeping and it's telling me that somebody has a question. Um, so we have to figure out ways to help our students negotiate between working online and getting that data and all the inquiry done, but also dealing with somebody that's trying to communicate with you. Um, really connected to the curriculum I already talked about, they want authentic learning experiences that aren't just blips on the radar that occur and then pass. Um, they also had an, an issue with the fact that they're sitting in a seventh grade classroom working in the Tika grant, and some kids really know what they're doing and they're really doing a good job already, and that some of them struggle with that. 
okay? Why am I sitting next to somebody that's great at this and I have no clue and the person next to me is in the middle of the road? Um, so what I pulled from this, some of our students, a large contingent, they want to make that shift from the page to the screen. They want the opportunity to use the technology in the classroom. It, it's no surprise to anybody sitting in this classroom. They want the opportunity to use communication technologies um, on a regular basis in the everyday classroom, connected to the curriculum. They want that opportunity. Surprise. Um, they want the opportunity, they want teachers to embed authentic learning experiences, and they want social learning experiences. They want the opportunity to, as we're working through this, let me work with my friends, let me work with the teachers. If I have an issue or if I have a problem, I want to be able to go to somebody and ask them for support, somebody that I trust. Um, and the interest driven, I want to be able to do an inquiry based project, I want to do something that interests me, I want to be able to tease something out that I would like to research also. So it's differentiated learning, but it's also the teacher having the trust in the individual to pick and choose something that's appropriate for the greater needs of the class and of the curriculum. Um, and they want to be able to have the opportunity to span across the disciplines. So I want to have something that I work on that's not just housed in social studies, not just housed in my language arts class. I want to be able to work across all my classes. Uh, quick commercial, uh, tomorrow morning, we will be un unveiling the, all of the totality of the disposition, uh, dispositions instrument. Uh, my colleague Lisa and Greg McVeary, they're on their way in. Uh, Lisa's here now, uh, videotaping me. And so what we'll do is we'll unveil all the rest of that. Um, and then I wanted to leave us with one of my favorite quotes from this. Uh, how we feel about using the internet is all right because there's nothing about the internet in school. And with that, turn it back.